Well, hello everybody, good evening, and welcome to Virtual Church once again here on a Sunday night with your host, Richard McVeigh, and the rest of the BIS community who are chatting away as I speak. It's very good to have you with me. I do hope that you are all well. I hope that you're all sitting very comfortably. And as usual, I hope that you've got your favorite drink to hand. What is your favorite drink? And do you indeed have it? I would like to know because that will make me very jealous. The first hymn, as you all know, uh, was Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, In Light, Inaccessible, Hid From Our Eyes. And it came in as a request from um, Maria New, who is one of our patrons. So thank you very much, Maria. And she says, on this date, i.e. today, I'm celebrating 50 years as a member of my church choir. Could you please play Immortal Invisible in remembrance of my great aunt who taught me music and the organist at the time who had invited me to join the choir. This was his favorite hymn. Well, Maria, as you may know, it's also certainly one of my favorite hymns as well. So, I think that's a great way to open VC tonight. Don't you? So Eileen has just finished a G&T. Jonathan Priest, he's got a hot chocolate. We, what else do we have up here? Uh, iced tea from Jim. <laughs> iced? I've never actually tried an iced tea before. It scares me. Kathleen, hot tea, yeah. A bit of hot Yorkshire tea. English tea is just the best drink in the world. Okay, so the next hymn that we have coming your way comes in from Bill Ratey, who says that this is a a hymn for Lent, which indeed we are in Lent. Um, and it, but it's, um, he says, what does he say here? Um, the reading from um, Ephes um, Ephesians uh, chapter 5, verses 8 to 10 and 9, um, yeah, so 8 to 10, um, makes me think of virtual church. Uh, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth is what Bill Ratey says. And the hymn he wants me to play is, I want to walk as a light, as, as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. A very happy Mother's Day to any mothers in the chat tonight. Hello, happy Mother's Day to you. Newfound respect, uh, certainly after the, um, after the past few years of being a father and having a mother, you know, here doing all motherly things. Yes, it's quite a task, isn't it? And also, a happy day to everybody else as well. Even if you're not a mother, happy day to you. So, let's have a go at I want to walk as a child of the light.
this had a couple of flashes of colour on the screen as I was playing that. Who have we got? Um, oh, thank you very much, Robert. Wow. Thank you so much. You're on the beach, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know how you managed to chat and, and be so generous whilst on the beach. <laughs> thank you very much. Maria, thank you so much, Richard. Uh, for playing my request, greatly appreciated and enjoyed. It's a huge pleasure, Maria, it really is. I, I do virtual church simply to meet people from around the world um, and learn new hymns. I wouldn't have known that this particular hymn here um, for, from Bill Ratey had it not been requested. For example, I did know Immortal Invisible, that's one of my favorite hymns, uh, but thank you for requesting it and allow me to open with that today. Nick Knack has also just donated, so thank you very much, Nick Knack, as well. £20, thank you very much. You're very generous tonight. I really appreciate it, and it does really help. <laughs> Honestly, it does. Right, cool. Let's go on to hymn number three. Or is it three? That one or that one? I don't know, never know which one to do. I've been teaching Hugo how to count with his fingers. But one, two, three, four, five. Or is it one, two, three, four, five? Five. I don't know. It, com it confuses me. So, um, to, to, today is Mothering Sunday. Although interestingly, I was I was playing in Arundel Cathedral this morning. Now, Arundel is a it's a very Catholic place, and um, here in England we've sort of you know from one one thing or a, one reason or another, particularly Henry VIII, we're actually not a very Catholic place. But Arundel um, it has a really strong Catholic feeling about it. The cathedral is a very um, very established Catholic place and the castle um, over the road is a wonderful castle. It's one of the greatest examples of, I don't know what date it would be, it's very old. <laughs> uh, the chat will help me out here. But it's um, a, a, a fantastic example, a well-kept example. And the family who live there, the Duke of Norfolk, they're called, um, Duke and Duchess, are um, famous Catholics. Um, and the, the family paid for the cathedral to be built. My point here is that I was at Arundel this morning playing, and as far as I was aware, they didn't make they didn't make a single mention of it being Mothering Sunday, despite obviously Mary being very important in the Catholic Church. Unless I missed it, but I didn't hear a Mothering Sunday mentioned at all, which was a surprise to me. So I, I'm, I'm, today is a Mothering Sunday theme, really. So I'm going to play uh, a hymn which you may not associate with Mothering Sunday. But, and it's, it's possibly not. I mean, someone might be able to um, draw some um, relationship between it and, and, and mothers. But it's not really about the text. But... But um, the, the, the hymn I'm going to play is Mine eyes have seen the coming of the glory of the Lord. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Sorry, get those words in the right order. Battle Hymn of the Republic. This is um, it's a, a, a traditional um, American melody. Um, but the words are by a lady called Julia Ward Howe. I didn't know this until looking it up, but it's really important. I'll tell you what. No, I'll tell you why I'm playing it rather than giving you a, um, a, a quiz. <laughs> a quiz question. Julia Ward Howe was one of the founders of American Mother's Day. Did you know that? So one of the founders of American Mother's Day. I'm not quite sure what the difference is between American Mother's Day and the rest of the world Mother's Day is. I don't know. Maybe you Americans invented it. I don't know. I don't know. Genuinely don't know. But I, I never knew that this hymn was written by one of the founders of Mother's Day. How's that? Isn't that really cool? So we ought to have it. So, yes. Glory, glory. Then the band word in Lent. <coughs> I'm not going to say it. Or I'm not going to sing it either. I'm just going to play the music. So if you want to say it, you say it. That's up to you. Uh, where should we go?
wonderful hymn, isn't it? And I actually think it has much more dignity if it's played at a slower tempo. Um, <laughs> and where is it on here? David Wright. Well, David Wright says very good tempo. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. Um, someone else said, um, Ian, a fast march, but the, M the, the army is trying to go somewhere in a hurry. But a good tempo. I think actually that's a good marching speed, isn't it? Imagine that stomp. Uh, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. <laughs> I think it's perfect actually. Unless they're running. <laughs> Which I, I do quite a lot of that now actually. Anyway, so yeah, isn't that cool? So that was um, written by the, one of the founders of Mother's Day. Can't get more appropriate than that. <laughs> Another Mother's Day hymn, which has been sent in this time, uh, comes in from James uh, Mossop, who simply says, this is a lovely hymn for Mothering Sunday. And it is, James, it absolutely is. I agree, it's a beautiful tune, and it's a beautiful word. It's for Mary, Mother, our Lord. For Mary, Mother, our Lord. Let me find it. There it is. And the tune I'm going to play, which James has asked for, is the incorrect tune here. <laughs> oh, God. Number 380. Oh, look. No, I don't have the... Oh, James, I've got... Luckily, I've got the NEH just here. Um, number 385, it says on the page. So it's, for Mary, mother of the Lord, God's holy name be praised, who's first the son, who first the son of God adored, as on her child she gazed. And the wonderful tune of St. Um, Botolf um, goes, uh, it often goes to Jesus, uh, you the very thought of thee, with sweetness fills my breast. It's gorgeous, really beautiful tune. Sort of a, a, a quieter tune. So let's engage some of these beautiful mutations down on the lower division, on the choir. Basically a corn-a sound. And we'll go, with, we'll go with that, I think. Okay, so thank you very much, James, just, uh, for sending this one through.
Gorgeous uh, tune. Thank you very much, James. And the words are, of course, very appropriate for, um, for Mary, particularly, obviously, the mother of God. Speaking about motherly things, today's top five, I've actually put one together appropriate for Mothering Sunday. I've picked out some of my, I guess, some of my favourite hymns that you could associate for Mothering Sunday. And I've had a think. I'll try to explain why each of those hymns is appropriate for Mother's Day. So, so if you want to see what that list is, there's five hymns on here, all of which I think you'll know. Um, stick around and to see which ones I've chosen and why. Let's go into a hymn that you will all certainly know. It's another um, opportunity just to have a little bit of calm. I know it's not all about the louder emoji. Sometimes it's about the and relax emoji. We should get we should get one of those actually, shouldn't we? And relax, chill, man. We should get one of those like with a cocktail, and like our friend Robert on the beach with his cocktail, enjoying the sun, just relaxing. So this hymn, this next hymn is that is perfect for that. It's Amazing Grace, and Bill uh, says. What does Bill say then? He says, um, today's gospel reading from John 9, chapter, uh, chapter 9, verse 25, where, um, where the blind man healed by Jesus on the Sabbath uh, says, I do not know whether Jesus is a sinner or not, but I was blind, but now I see. The Christian should not overlook a miracle to focus on a sin uh, from the Decalogue. Please use this here. Oh, please use the fifth. Variation. Oh, Bill, I haven't got. Oh no, Bill. Please use a fifth variation from the new um, PDF I sent last summer. The last verse reharm. Oh, Bill, I haven't got that to hand. Uh, if you fire that through on email, like very clearly, within two minutes, I might be able to get it in for the final verse. But it has to be super clear. On an email, all right? So it has to be a single PDF. I open it and it's there because I can't, I've got no one here to help. So, Bill, work with me on this one, won't you? <laughs> I missed that, I missed that last sentence. I apologize. But you've got, you got about two or three minutes <laughs> at the most to send it through. Quick, 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 quick.
quiet, isn't it? Very quiet, it's beautiful. It gives us a bit of chance just to relax. Apart from in verse 3, where through many dangers, toils, and snares, what you heard there was a little bit of a combination of the solo orchestral reeds pulled down onto the solo, the swell division. Listen to when I pull on the solo to swell. So listen to when the solo reads come on, you'll be able to hear the difference. So that's without, with. Um, with, the, with the strings as well, the strings and the full swell sound. both divisions to great effect if you put them together. That's what you had in verse 3. Bill, I hope that was okay for you. If we didn't have the last verse, I'm really sorry. We'll have to make sure we get that in in the near future. <laughs> so Brady is up next with a request which we did have fairly recently, but who am I to, uh, to not play a pre-request? So we actually had this, thing. I think it was maybe in the last week or so. But it's, my faith looks up to the, uh, to the tune Olivet. There it is. We'll have three verses of this, because like I say, we did have it fairly recently, so let's not repeat ourselves. Choir mutations, accompanied by the flutes, on the other divisions. Had a few more um, very generous donations just um, in, in the past few minutes. So thank you very much, James, for your 20. He says, thank you for playing my request. It was a pleasure. Uh, Evelyn, who sent through 20 Canadian dollars, I think that is. Uh, thank, you for so, uh, thank you so much for playing my request last week. Oh, that's very kind of you to remember. Thank you. Um, and also to Thomas, who sent $10 and has requested Sing we of the Blessed Mother. Well, actually, Thomas, funny you've requested that because that one is coming up later anyway. So hold on fire, hold fire for that one. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary. Gorgeous um, tune. Again, uh, choir mutations. And this is what they sound like.
beautiful hymn for Lent, isn't it? My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Saviour divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be wholly thine. We did have it recently, but that doesn't matter. Thank you very much, Brady, for requesting it. Gerrit or Gerrit has pointed out very correctly that we are indeed in Salisbury, virtual Salisbury. How did you know that, Gerrit? Um, it's a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful organ. And the real organ is just something to behold. Um, this is a very old sample set now in terms of software and technology. You know, sample sets have improved. I think this is a, a very beautiful sample set and it does the real organ good justice, but it doesn't really prepare you for the real instrument because the real instrument in the building is um, it's a, it's, it really fills the building beautifully well. It's voiced for that building. Um, Salisbury Cathedral is a, a large cathedral, but it's by no means one of, one of the largest. It's, it's sort of somewhere in the middle. And the, but the organ, this four manual instrument with two tubers and reeds, big mixtures, and lovely diapasons, sings into the building so well. I mean, if I put this, this screen on, you can see that the organ is separated into two chambers, uh, which allows the, the, the sound to just to come out more. And the pedal reads, and the, the flu, probably can't hear that, I don't know. But the, the 232 foot are in the uh, north transept over, I don't know why I'm pointing over there, but they're over in the north transept. So if you're looking down in the cathedral, down towards the altar, you, 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 they're, they're over there. And they, they're big in the nave, but not very big in the choir, which is actually very effective because you can use them in, in a choral accompaniment uh, to great effect. Um, so if you're ever in Wiltshire or the south, the southwest of the country in England, if, you, if you've never been to Salisbury, you really must. It's, it's mm, chef's kiss. That's what I would describe it as. Okay, so this is now um, another hymn for Mother's Day. I popped this one in. Um, it is, it's rather ironic, isn't it? Not ironic, but un unfortunate that Mother's Day is in Lent. I suppose it could, you could draw a correlation between giving thanks to Mary, I suppose, you know, sympathising with her, um, what she had to go through, um, and, you know, giving thanks to her. Can't imagine, really, can you? You can't imagine that. Being a parent, just can't. I mean, forget all of the, forget the religious aspect, forget that. It's at the end of the day, Jesus was her son, you know, um, and it's not a very nice thing to think about, is it? What happened? Okay, so faith of our fathers. This is quite funny, this. I never knew this until today. There's this tune called St. Catherine, which is a nice tune. Okay, but I didn't realize this, that you've got faith of our fathers and faith of our mothers as well. I don't know which one came first or whether it's the same person. So the words are by A, B, Pattern of faith of our mothers. Let's have a look who the words are by faith of our fathers. A, B, Pattern? They're different, but it's the same tune, isn't it? So can anyone, anyone give me a bit of context around that? Why well, there were two very similar hymns to mothers and to fathers to the same tune, but by different people. Which one came first? PGM Music says, Richard, it's not a Marian fest. Well, what isn't? What, what my virtual church? I don't know. Probably. I didn't say it was a Marian fest. Um, 
Anyway, so faith of our fathers, live, no, sorry, sorry, faith of our mothers living still in cradle song and bedtime prayer, in nursery lore and fireside love, thy presence still pervades the air. Faith of our mothers, living faith, we will be true to thee till death. Oh, you've heard it there, you've heard it here. The knick-knack, I think, was able to confirm, it would appear, says knick-knack, that Faith of Our Fathers came first, um, written by Frederick Faber in 1849, and then Faith of Our Mothers was written by Arthur Patton, Patten, maybe, in 1920. And then knick-knack says, thanks, Internet. That's what the Internet is for, isn't it? Just finding out useful information just like that. <laughs> so beautiful um, tune, and I think that's the right sort of tempo. I think the tempo is just works like that, doesn't it? It shouldn't, doesn't want to be any faster. It doesn't want to be too lilty. I don't, I don't think it's that sort of hymn, actually. But a nice tune uh, by uh, Henry Hemi. Henry Hemi says.
Anyway, let's go on to um, a lint, a, a lint, <laughs> a hymn for Lent, uh, which has come in uh, from Daniel, Daniel Kubaki, who says, a grand hymn. I love the way Daniel describes his, his, his requests. <laughs> That's a grand hymn, apparently. So Jesus, Lord of life and glory, is coming to a stream near you in any minute, and I find it. Uh, Jesus, Lord of life and glory, to the tune uh, St. Raphael. So I can now tell you what some more of these words are. Jesus, Lord of life and glory, bend from heaven thy gracious ear, while our waiting souls adore thee, friend of helpless sinners hear. By thy mercy, O oh, deliver us, good Lord. I don't know whether anyone was tuned to this, so I'll assume most of us will not. So I'll solo it out on the great trumpet, which we have heard, but not in solo form yet. Okay, let's have a go with that registration. I'll give you, there are six verses here, but I won't give you six verses. Too many, too many verses. Okay, we're making really good progress. So that was hymn number eight, and we're about to go into hymn number nine. And this hymn number nine comes in from Benjamin Yao, who always likes to send in hymns. I don't know how he does this, but he always manages to send in a hymn that I've never heard of before. Week after week, he manages to do this, so hats off. 
hats off to you, Benjamin, for doing this. So he says, a 6-8 time signature dedicated for a particular um, member of your technical team <laughs> and, and uh, the BIS community. At this rate, everyone should know now because there's one person in particular who seems to like these um, time signatures of 6-8. It's Bill Ratey, everyone. Bill Ratey. Bill actually is the, um, he seems to be doing all of the timestamps at the minute. So thank you very much, Bill. By the way, whilst I'm just thinking about saying thanks, I just want to say thank you to our producers tonight. Our producer is James Palmer. So if you have any queries, any questions, any concerns, um, any feedback, um, if, and you want to get in touch with me, just um, tag James Palmer, um, and then James will actually let me know, let me know directly. So James, I, I think I forgot to say thank you to you and to Josh last week. So here's a here's a um, an applause for you as well. What? No, no. It's the still doing. Go away. <laughs> Anyway, so <laughs> I really appreciate all the work that you do, guys. It, it is just beyond helpful. So Benjamin's request is this. Let me tell you what it is, because you've no idea what it is yet, have you? You've got busy, be people busy booing the producers. I don't know why. Ridiculous. I'll have a word with them, James. Give me a sight, O Saviour, of thy wondrous love to me, of the love that brought thee down to earth to die on Calvary, Oh, make me understand it. Help me to take it in. What it meant to thee, the Holy One, to bear away my sin. So, I, Benjamin has requested this to have a lilting sense about it. So, we ought to sort of, if, if you're not doing this, as I'm playing this, then I'm doing something wrong. So it's my job to get that head going from side to side. Let me know. <laughs> JT says, boo, hearsay. <laughs> it does. Uh, JT, it really does have all those sounds. And it also has. <laughs> because, of course, I am that really that funny, aren't I? No? Silence. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for your support there. Anyway, come on, let's go on before we get too bogged down in sound effects. So, nod your head like this.
Give me a sight, O Saviour, of thy wondrous love to me, of the love that brought thee down to earth to die on Calvary. I hope you're all doing that. No, you're not just leaving that to me. <laughs> I'm leaving it to some guy on the internet just to nod his head like the Winston Churchill dog. You people outside of England have no idea what that means, do you? <laughs> anyway, this is actually... Oh, the next one is our final pre-request. And it comes in from Derek Warren, who's already there. This is hymn number 10. And I've had to photocopy this onto, the, um, onto my hymnal, otherwise known as my iPad. Uh, it's lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me. That's the refrain. And the verse one is, I am weak and I need thy strength and power to help me over my weakness, weakest hour. Help me through the darkness thy face to see. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me. Give me a thumbs up if you know this one. I can't because I don't know this one. Okay, so let's have a little go then, shall we? Um, what on earth shall we use? Okay, let's try. One, two, three, four. Let's try some stops down on the choir with some swelly stops. Go for that and go from there, I think. Enjoy.
Anyone know that one? Anyone know that? Give me a thumbs up if you knew that one. I didn't know that one at all. Brand new to me. Quite a, a interesting accompaniment because the accompaniment actually is very different to the melody uh, in a lot, a lot of places. So the if you're not careful, the accompaniment could completely obliterate because the accompaniment goes a lot higher. The chords go a lot higher than the than the tune. So you just have to be just a little bit careful not to put the congregation off. So Derek Warren, thank you very much for, um, for sending that through. Oh, Richard Allegra says um, that he knows that one. Um, I guess Dion knows it because it's right in the words. I don't know. Uh, but Eileen says that's new to me. Um, oh, Matt says he knows it. Evelyn says that she knows it. Uh, but Richard Sedding, Roger Richards, Maria, all say it's new to them. Uh, Peter Sharp gives a thumbs up, so I guess he knows it. Daniel knows it. Well, Daniel's like a, a hymn expert, aren't you? So you know everything about hymns. You know them all. But Brendan agrees with me. It's new to Brendan. So actually, that was the last pre-request, which then now takes us nicely into... Oh, you're welcome. Well, thank you very much. That's very, very kind. I really appreciate your applause. Thank you. <laughs> it takes us now into a top five, which is not really a top five as such. It's just five hymns that I think are brilliant for Mother's Day. Um, and you might not necessarily associate them with Mother's Day, but I've had a bit of a think, and I think you could associate them with Mother's Day, and I'll tell you why. Um, and also the first one that we're going to have is is a really good hymn for Lent as well. So it sort of kills two birds with one stone, if you'll excuse that saying. Um, it's how deep the Father's love for us. Now let me just get it up on the screen. There it is. So this is a um, this is a Lenten hymn and reflects. Uh, I think this. It reflects on the profound and um, sacrificial love of God, um, akin, I guess, to the nurturing and selfless love that mothers will show to their children. So I think this is a Mother's Day hymn because it's a, it reflects on the profound and sacrificial love of God, um, which is then similar to what mothers how mothers are with their own children. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. To die for our sins, basically. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one. Bring many sons to glory. Nice hymn, this by Stuart Townend. It's one of the one of the nicer modern uh, hymns, I think. I'm very happy to play it for you now. So this is number one in my list of my top five hymns for Mother's Day. <laughs> A bit of an alternative list, but let's go with it.
to how deep the Father's love for us. My first hymn in honour of Mother's Day, in my alternative Mother's Day top five hymns. Second alternative thing, thing being a hymn here, which you may not have thought of, but I'm just sort of loosely basing these hymns on Mother's Day, right? These aren't, these aren't gospel laminated sort of ultimate list ever. But number two is great is thy faithfulness. There it is, where is it? Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not, as thou hast been thou forever. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. So on. So I think this, I, I wrote here that this, this, this celebrates the faithfulness of God which um, uh, which mirrors the devotion and reliability, I suppose, that mothers demonstrate in their care and guidance for their children. It's like a two-way relationship. You have you are able to have faith in your in your parent or as a you know have faith in your children. So Great is thy faithfulness, and I says um, it mirrors the uh, devotion. Um, and I was just trying to think of an, an, an alternative word for reliability. I guess assurance, the assurance that mothers demonstrate in their care and guidance for their children.
such a tune there, isn't it? My perspective of that hymn really changed when I heard it being sung um, in Chichester Cathedral, played by a Methodist. I was conducting a choir down there, and the organist accompanying the choir, which I didn't know until after the service, was brought up as a Methodist. A very fine organist indeed. And this was one of the hymns during the Eucharist. And I've always sort of heard it, you know. That sort of speed. Bum, bum, bum. Where it sort of, I just, where it sort of ticks along quite nicely. But then I heard it performed and sung and played at that sort of speed. Very much three beats per bar, rather than almost one in a bar. And I thought, well, blow me down. This is a whole new hymn. And it was really, really well sung by everyone in the congregation. Particularly when it got to around here in the refrain. Morning. really hear everyone singing and then everyone's getting really excited now really ex excited yeah so I, I actually now I always play that with a bit more sort of weight and dignity so that was number two in my list of hymns for Mother's Day, hymns that you might not have thought of for Mother's Day. The next one though, I think you might have. Number three in my list is, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. So Blessed Assurance, I think, brings a sense of comfort and security in God's unwavering love. Just like the reassurance and confidence that mothers provide to her children. So it's all about that reassurance that you can provide as a parent to your child or indeed to your children. Blessed assurance. That's what we all look for in life, isn't it? No matter who we are, how old we are, how young we are, how confident we are. We all need a reassurance. We all need assurance. And it's, it's mothers who can give it the best, I think. So the tune is called, uh, well, the tune is just called Assurance, but the words are by Fanny Crosby. We've had a lot of Fanny Crosby recently, haven't we? We've mentioned her a few times. Um, so, yeah, three verses of this beautiful
Beautiful hymn, isn't it? A very, very reflective hymn. The sort of hymn that you'd have in communion, isn't it? It's not really a gradual hymn or an offertory hymn, but it's more of a, a chance to reflect, I think. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Chosen for Mother's Day for that word assurance that mothers can give us. Say hello to soup potato because I'm now an expert in soup in soup soup potato and evil pea. Who knew what parents learn from having children and reading books of all sorts? <laughs> right now this is this next one actually was um, you could say sponsored um, earlier on by Thomas. Thank you very much, by the way, to um, Dulvaran. Dulvaran or Dulvaran? For your £10, that's very kind. But Thomas uh, sponsored earlier on Singui of the Blessed Mother. And it just so happens that's in my list. It's a bit of an obvious choice, really, this one, isn't it? I thought I'd put some um, obvious ones in there. Uh, but let me just find it quickly. Sing we of the Blessed Mother. Sing we, sing we. Sing we of, to the tune Abbot's Lee. Music by Cyril Taylor, of course. Right, so I think this hymn, Sing we of the Blessed Mother who received the angel's word, um, this hymn, obviously, specifically, that celebrates um, Mary. But it also highlights her virtues, such as her faithfulness, her humility, and her devotion, which I think serve as an example for all mothers um, and evoke admiration and reverence <laughs> on Mother's Day. So, of course, this is about Mary, but glorifying Mary. And we can relate that to all motherly figures in our lives, I think. Let's try something um, a bit different. Let's just try the, the choir and the great eight-foot reeds coupled together to see whether they're in tune or not. Temperature is warming up here in England. Thankfully, Caroline keeps teasing me to say that I'm cold-blooded in that I feel the cold. No, I'm warm-blooded because I feel the cold. I, I don't deny that. I am. I, I do feel the cold. I have, I have the heating on. And in the car, she likes to have it turned down. I'm like, what are you doing? It's freezing. What are you doing? It's too hot. It's freezing. Too hot. Luckily, in, our, in the Audi, um, and in our uh, Tiguan, um, you can have like, dual heating. So on her side, it's cold. On my side, it's hot. I never quite understand that logic because it doesn't work like that, does it? The air just comes out, you know, in, in, on her side, it's going to be cold. On my side, it's going to be warm. But ultimately, it's just going to mix to together. There isn't a, a barrier between us. Anyway, digress. Sing we of the Blessed Mother. Um, which camera should we go for? This one.
Okay, so that was number two in my list. Sing we of the Blessed Mother to the tune Abbots Lee. Uh, and also requested earlier on by Thomas Maronta. So it takes us into number one. You, most of you tend to know what my favourite hymn is, don't you? Don't you? Yes? What's my favourite hymn, guys? Kofen, yes. Well, Kofen's a good one. I think that probably is one of my favourites. No, it's not. It's Blind Word, isn't it? It's Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. This is number one in the um, my top five hymns for Mother's Day. So just to recap, we had number, uh, number five, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Number four was Great is Thy Faithfulness. Number three was Blessed Assurance. Number two Sing we of the Blessed Mother, and number one, Love Divine or Love's Excelling, which I think is particularly fitting for Mother's Day. This hymn, the words, uh, praise God's surpassing love and grace, reflecting the boundless and nurturing love that our mothers bestow upon us. Yeah? That makes sense. So it's particularly fitting, I think, for Mother's Day, because this um, the, the the words by Charles Wesley, one of the great poets, hymn writers. Um, he praises God's surpassing love and grace, love divine and love that's setting joy of heaven to earth, come down, fill in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies, crown. And, you know, this um, uh, praises God's surpassing love and grace, reflecting the boundless and nurturing love that mothers bestow upon their children, who the mothers bestow upon us. Let's have a go then at this, number one. And then, after this, we'll get into our live requests. So... If you want to make some live requests, please do. Otherwise, we'll have an early bath tonight, as they say. Okay, so here we go. Love divine or love's excelling. Where, which angle should we go for? Let's start here, I think.
Well, there you have it. So that was number one in my list. They weren't really in order, if I'm honest, but they were. That was my alternative list for Mother's Day. Who thought that you could get hymns like How Deep the Father's Love for Us and Great is Thy Faithfulness? Who thought you could get, well, Blessed Assurance is an easy one to get in there. And Sing We Have the Blessed Mother is an easy one to get in there. But Love Divine loves excelling. Well, it's all about love, isn't it? And mothers are just lovely. But earlier on in the VC, we also had, don't forget, Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, which I managed to attach to Mother's Day because the author of the, the words, which I didn't know this until just today, the author of the words, uh, Julia Ward Howe, was one of the founders of the American Mother's Day. And I still don't know whether that's the same as UK Mother's Day. I don't know. But that was a pretty cool connection. So there we go. That was my top five hymns for Mother's Day. Hope you enjoyed that. Okay, cool. Right, let's now hand over to you. Here we go. So, this is now where I hand over to the BIS community, uh, where I say, go on then, what do I play? What do I play? So, I've now, I'm going to look over to my esteemed producer tonight, and we only have, by the looks of it, we had three requests, live requests so far. I can't believe that's only, we've only had three tonight. You could do better than this. Um, well, we've had one of them already, haven't we? So, actually, we've got two to get through. So Nick Knack, who very generously sent through um, £20 to sponsor this hymn. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. Um, as requested, which I haven't played this for a long time, actually. I don't know whether it's in my hymnal. Um, let me just I, let me see whether it's in here first. It's When Morning Gilds the Skies. Beautiful hymn. But I don't know whether it's in here. When Morning Oh, it is. It is. Yeah. When morning gilds the skies, my heart awaking cries. May Jesus Christ be praised. Alike at work and prayer, to Jesus I repair. May Jesus Christ be praised. I used to love this hymn when I was a chorister. I don't know what it was about it, but I used to absolutely love it. And thank you very much, Nick Knack, for requesting it. And just for just for a moment, taking me back to when I was a chorister at Chesterfield Parish Church. Where I had a very, a very happy time there. Okay, let's have a go.
Together we have a first time listener tonight as an FTL, first time listener. Uh, in JT um, Basner, do we go, do we go Basner or Basner? You are very welcome. Thank you very much for joining in. I do hope that you are enjoying the show. VC is a friendly place where anything goes, basically. Well, not anything. I would say not every, not, not anything. Most that no, some things go. VC is a place where some things go. There we go. How's that for a descriptive? Um, description of what VC is. <laughs> so it's hymns, a bit of chat from me, um, and organ music, even though, although we haven't actually had any organ music yet tonight. So I need to think about an organ voluntary. So if anyone wants a voluntary tonight, gotta let me know what I've got to play. Don't make it too hard, though. Thank you very much, uh, Nick Knack, for 20 quid, and also for reminding me of my youth when morning gilds the skies. Oh, Scott Flanagan has just requested. Um, uh, they're in God's garden. Oh, okay. Well, that's in the ELW apparently, which is next to my computer because I was scanning a previous hymn from it. So if you bear with me for a jiffy, I will go and get that. Um, I will, I'm actually just put it on this. Here we go. Listen to this orchestra tuning up. <laughs> do, do, do. Do, do, do. Right, the ELW, number 342 in the ELW for Scott Flanagan. There in God's garden stands the tree of wisdom, whose leaves hold forth the healing of the nations. Tim just makes quite a nice um, armrest, actually. <laughs> the good old hymnal is massive. Okay, let's have a go at this. Are you guys going to pipe down or what? Or are you going to keep on talking? very noisy in here. Hello everyone, please be quiet. Hello. I know what, I'll shut them up. That got people's attention, didn't it? Right, there in God's garden <laughs> stands the tree of wisdom. <laughs> Okay, here we go.
You have a little tune there, Scott. Thank you very much. I didn't know that one at all. First time I've ever heard um, There in God's Garden. The tune is called Shades Mountain, by the way, if you want to uh, check it out. I had a request um, by... Who have we had this request by? Thomas Moronta again. Let's have a look. Now, I think James has been so good as to send me this onto my send it to my email let's have a look i don't know what it is mind but it's an ave maria by jay um jrk delt arcadelt hey. matt fraser says they're in god's garden i forgot about that hymn well, that's one of the great things about VC is we have hymns which are really old, hymns which are really new, really popular hymns, very unknown hymns. And it, it just reminds us, it introduces us to um, hymns that you've for forgotten about and to new hymns. That's the great thing about it. It's an education, I find. That's one of the reasons why I really love it. Um, Bill Rachel says, Arkadelt. There we go. J. Arkadelt. Is this well known? All I have here is a, all I have here is a piano score. I don't have any words. I sort of know what the words are to the Ave Maria, but I don't have much else to go on, unfortunately. So I have to bear with me. I don't have much, much else to go on. Um, it's a bit like the um, the police, isn't it? The police uh, dropping the, you know, dropping the case. That famous, uh, that famous um, the mystery. They dropped it because they had nothing to go on. The, the, the mystery of when they were. So the actual, I've got, a, so here it is, here's the joke, right? Let me tell you a joke. I've got a joke. This lorry was driving down the motorway and the police pulled behind the lorry, flashed the lights, flashed their lights, pulled the lorry over into the um, slip road. Window down. Excuse me, sir. What have you got in the back of your lorry? Toilet seats. And the reason why the police pulled the lorry over is because they had a tip-off that this lorry was carrying stolen toilet seats. And they found it. But the problem was that the toilet seats had been nicked from the police station. <laughs> from the police station! But they didn't have any evidence that the police, the, that the, 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 the toilet seats in the lorry were that came from the police station, so they had to drop the case because the police had nothing to go on. <laughs> oh God! Right.
Well, that was, uh, I don't know what it was really. It was An Ave Maria by J. Arkadelt. Um, I think that might have been how it went. I'm afraid I, I don't know that one. I was just playing what, what I had in front of me and all I had there was a, um, a piano score. So whose arrangement that was, I don't know. Well, it says actually Giuliano music. So there we go. That was for Thomas. If you can get me a better arrangement of it, then might be a bit better. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let's have a go now at an oh another request from Thomas. Gosh, Thomas, you're requesting a lot tonight. Um, that so James, have we have you sent it through on? Hang on, how many? That one you've sent through doesn't have, it's not the full version. Okay, right then. So I think we're going to have one more hymn and then we're going to have a voluntary. Um, Daniel Kibaki would like me to play the Buxtehude, um, the Shakon in E minor. Hmm, I don't know whether I've got that one. To hand, Daniel. I don't know whether I know it actually. What an E minor. Have I played that one before? Carlisle, if you'd like me to play a hymn, if you could just drop, you know, a, a very small donation into the chat, that would be fantastic. Then I could, then I would be able to do it for you. Nick Knack has come up with a solution here. How about Bach's Fugue on the Magnificat? That works because the Magnificat was obviously written by Mary. Yeah, let's have that. Shall we have that? Yeah, we'll do that one. I'm just waiting for an email from James, which may or may not arrive. I don't know. <laughs> um, Hail Holy Queen, enthroned above. I don't think I've got it on my iPad. And then we'll have a voluntary. By the way, guys, Hot news. I'm going to Prague. I'm going to Prague this week to play the organ. I'm really, really excited about. Anyone here in Prague? Uh, let's have a look. Let me save this um, to my iPad. Okay, here we go. So, Hail Holy Queen enthroned above, O Maria. Hail Queen of Mary, sorry, hail, hail Queen of Mercy and of Love, O Maria. Triumph, all ye cherubim, sing with us, ye seraphim. Heaven and earth resound the hymn, Salve, Salve, Salve Regina. No, it's not in, not in a church, actually. It's in a concert hall. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to film it or not. I'll certainly film some of it, but it's, it's sort of a bit of a secret. So I can't really give you any more information. But I'm very, very excited, and I will, I'll tell you all about it after the event. But I'm going to fly over on uh, very early Friday, do the concert on Friday evening, and come home Saturday. It's all very, very exciting. I can't wait to share it with you. Well, share as much of it as I can with you, as, as I'm allowed to. Because all will be revealed why it's a bit of a secret. Uh, yeah, but I've never been to Prague before. I've never been to Prague, and I gather it's a very, very beautiful place. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to have a huge amount of time to look around. Um, but I'm going to try to at least look out the window. <laughs> to see what's to see what's there. So Thomas has requested Hail Holy Queen enthroned above.
someone asked if we could have the Whoopi Goldberg Sister Act version. Not again. Not again. If I did do that, it wouldn't have been for the first time. Put it that way. I've done it before. Not here on VC, but out in real life. Would you believe it? And <laughs> I don't know how much I enjoyed it, to be honest. You know, some things are for some people and some things are for other people. And I would say that was one of the things that wasn't really for me. But anyway, it was, it was fun. That was the important thing. It was fun. Right, Philip, I agree. This is a very good sample set, as I was saying earlier. It's a bit old now, um, but it is, it is actually very, very nice. Nicely done. It's a very... The only thing about it, I would say, just um, very briefly, is it's just a little bit woolly. Woolly is a word that we use to sort of... It's not very clear in the base. It's a bit sort of foggy, a bit dull, a bit... You know, if I pull out these stops here and... You hear, hear the bass there? Um, those lower notes don't have a, as much definition as they do in the building. They're s that. So when you, when you go down... Um, below Tennessee. When you get to the lower ends of the keyboards, it just becomes a little bit muddy, a bit dark. And the real organ in, in Salisbury just is the opposite of that. It's super clear down there. The, the, the mixtures and the reeds are, on this are very good. But there's just something about the bass which just doesn't quite sound um, as lifelike as it does in the building, which is a shame, really. But I think, as, as a, on the whole, this is, um, this is a fantastic sample set. Um, Doodle Lounge. Well, Philip, you, you've heard me play it lots of times. It's, it's amazing. It's an amazing instrument, that one. Um, I would. I'd recommend it, yeah. I mean, yeah. Particularly if you've got, um, as I would say, Doodle Lounge, particularly if you've got speakers, because the, the new surround version um, really puts you in the middle of the church. Um, and I, people who played Doodle Lounge, the real instrument, and then have played it here, and I haven't played the real one yet, I intend to, but people who play the real one and then come here do actually say that this is a better representation of the organ because the organ in Doodle Lounge, the console, is up on the gallery. Um, I can show you. The organ console is, is up on the gallery, and you're very, very close to a very, very loud organ, which can be thrilling for a bit, but after a while, it becomes very, very tedious. So that's Doodle Lounge there. You got the grate over on. Let me get this right. I think the, the grate is. I forget now where where it, where it is. But you got grate and swell, and then solo and choir. The shamards are up here in the middle. So when I say solo, it hasn't got solo. It's got the choir division and massive pedal division as well. Um, but you're sat right here, and look how close it is to the console. So it's epically loud, epically loud. But in the sample set version, you're actually playing it from further down in the church. And it's not as, it's just not as loud. And it's not as in your face. You, you get more resonance. And I think it is just a, a better experience because you get to hear the whole organ rather than it just screaming in your face. Anyway, this isn't really why you come to virtual church to talk to talk about sample sets. Um, Max has just said, listen to a, just listen to a 20, a 200,000 pound speaker system. Well, that's even more than mine. Uh, my first thoughts was how incredible some help, help work samples would sound on it. Yeah, well, it certainly would, wouldn't it? Well, it depends what the venue is and 
you know, how it's voiced as well, because it could just be it's so shrill, it could just hurt. It has to be blended into the, into the building. Like all pipe organs are voiced for a particular building. Um, yeah. So I don't know what, what on earth am I gonna play for voluntary? I don't know what to play now. Um, give me, just ask me, ask me to play something and I'll, I'll either say yes or no. So go, make some suggestions. What time is it, by the way? 35 past 10. It's getting on. It's getting on. If you, um, if you just hold fire, by the way, I might, be able to, I might be able to get you a bit of a cheeky discount on the new dude launch around. Trois dons. Yeah, right. Don't think so, my friend. <laughs> I've recorded someone playing one of those. It was, um, was it Twidons or was it something else? What the, I, um, Jeremy Lloyd played something by Alan at Rochester on my Rochester recording. And um, it was fantastic. Was it one of the Dons? Was it one of those? I can't remember. Doug, I don't play that actually. I don't play that one. I don't play that one. Eileen says, Handel's Largo. I could play that. I was just thinking maybe something a bit more uplifting, you know? Evelyn, uh, Tuba Tune. Which, which one? The Cocker? The Lang? Oh, it's Bobby says, Jerusalem. Well, I could have Jerusalem. Could play that. Uh, So I can't play the Nundankets because I don't play it yet. Uh, 540, that needs to be practiced. <laughs> Lang, O to Joy. That's not really a hymn, is it? There you go, you've had it. <laughs> um, what's Nigel suggested? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Cocker, Cocker Tuba Tune. Do I dare play that on no practice? Or oh, wasn't it for me? That's a tough one, that. I could play that. It's, it is a good organ, this, for the Cocker. We have the good tuba, don't we? All right, come on. Let's, let's have a bit of Cocker because we're waffling now. Bobby says, yes, you dare. That's easy for you to say. You're hiding behind the camera on your comfy sofa, hopefully with a refreshing drink, which I have not got. I have no drink here. I need a drink. Drink. There's no one downstairs apart from me. I've got the whole house to myself. Well, the whole room to myself anyway. Jeez, you joy of man's desiring. It needs to be a bit, 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 more, bit more uplifting because it's Mother's Day. I know we're in Lent. Okay, let's have the cocker. So a few people have said cocker. Ah, all right, all right. Let's have a quick, let me have a look at this key change before I play it. Let me have a quick look. Give me a, just a, give me a little jiffy. Da, 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 da. Oh, I need to turn face, face, funny face feature on. Da 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 You know you know the bit of Bratson, don't you? Da 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 Oh Daniel, you've given me twenty uh I don't know what that is, uh Philip. DKK twenty. Is that um Denmark? I don't know what the, um, the currency is over in Denmark. I'm so sorry. Come on then. Nick that says, Nick, that says be fine once you get into it, just put the autopilot on. Okay, it's as easy as that, isn't it? So what does Coco want? He wants a swell, 16, 8, 4, and 2, which we have all of that. Uncoupled, fine, you can do that. Uh, great diapasons, 16, 8, and 4 which of course we have on this organ. Choir or solo tuba, there it is. Pedal 16 and eight. 
to great. Okie dokie then. Right, wish me luck, guys. Thanks for this. You don't ask for much, do you? You don't ask for much, you lot.
<laughs> Did he just couple the the super coupler? Well, no. Well, it's just the the four foot on this organ. So there is an eight foot tuba, and then a four foot on top of it. So yeah, it's pretty loud, isn't it? That. <laughs> oh. That is in the building, that is loud. That, those two tubers are massive. Well, thank you all very much. I will call it a night there, if you don't mind. Uh, so that was the Cocker Tuba Tune, as requested by a few people, uh, because we are in Salisbury Cathedral tonight, where there is a glorious Father Willis Tuba, one of the finest tubers in the country. Uh, Willis just made the best tubers just undoubtedly the, the best tubers, I think, in the world. Um, and this organ is just, oh, it's glorious. It's glorious for English music, just like that. There is actually a recording of me playing this uh, piece on this sample set on the channel where I register it properly and I actually practiced it and there was fewer wrong notes. <laughs> so if you want to go and check it out, um, it's, it's, on, it's on BIS and um, it's, it does sound good. I actually vo I've, I've voiced the organ uh, into a way that I recognise um, from the real organ, because I know the real organ pretty well, because I've recorded it twice, at least for BIS. Uh, so I voiced this sample set to make it as similar as possible. Uh, and that, that recording of the cocker um, sounds, I think, remarkably similar to the pipe organ. You wouldn't, I think, be able to tell if, if you didn't know. So go and check it out. If, if you do watch it, if you, do get, if, you, if you are inclined to watch it, I would really appreciate it if you leave me a comment and say, I've watched it, it sounds pretty good, or it doesn't sound quite as good as I thought. <laughs> Whatever you want to say, I'd really appreciate that. I also really appreciate your company tonight. So thank you for joining me tonight. Ways to our producers. I, I don't know why, but I forget to thank the producers. So James Palmer, thank you very much for your help tonight. And thank you everyone for watching and just joining in. Thank you for those people who've donated tonight. Let me just name some names who have donated. So Evelyn, thank you very much. Philip, Thomas, Scott, um, uh, Dolveran, Thomas again, Thomas again, Evelyn again, James, Nicknack. Maria and Robert Salarski. So thank you very much to all of you who have been very generous tonight. I hope you've had a good time. I hope you've had a good weekend. And I really hope you have a good week. I will see you in Prague. Ha 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 ha. If anyone's in Prague, let me know and we can go for a beer. <laughs> What's Prague beer like, I wonder? I'm looking forward to finding out, let me tell you. So until then, I will say a good night and cheerio. You stay safe, you take care, and I will see you next time. Good night, everyone. Goodbye.